With the summer of 2023 well on its way, there's one deep sky target I've been anticipating returning to since last year. At a distance of just over 2,000 light years away from Earth, I'm talking about the Great Cygnus Loop, or the Veil Nebulae. The Cygnus Loop is a stunning supernova remnant nebula in the constellation Cygnus, holding some of the most beautiful colors in all the night sky nebulae, and personally one of my favorite nebulae to image. I've photographed the Veil Complex a few times in the past with various different equipment. Last year, I shot it with a very wide lens, the RedCat 51 telescope, and I was able to get the entire Cygnus loop in one frame. And times before that, I shot it with my Celestron 130 SLT telescope, and I got really close on the Western Veil Nebula. Tonight though, I plan to get my closest shot ever of the Veil Nebula with my giant Celestron CPC 1100 telescope, and really zoom in on the Western Veil Nebula. This summer season of astrophotography for me has gone off to a rough start. With all the wildfire smoke from Canada, the clouds, and just general equipment troubles, I haven't been able to do that much astrophotography this summer. And the ones I have, I haven't been able to film it very much and make YouTube videos from it. However, that's not to say I've been completely clouded out this summer. For example, check out these two shots of M13, the great globular cluster of Hercules, and M27, the Dumbbell Nebula, I shot earlier this year. One of the problems I've had to work out with my equipment this summer is related to my star shapes. About a month or two ago when I was imaging M13, the Great Hercules Star Cluster, I noticed that my stars were a little oblong shape and not perfectly round. I put this off at first as maybe it was a collimation error with my equipment, but I later noticed it was a more severe problem than that. Through some tweaking, I was able to narrow it down to not a collimation error, but an error in the corrector plate. And through some even more tweaking, I was able to conclude it was a problem with my dew heater ring. Now, why was it a problem with the dew heater ring, you may ask? Well, I believe the dew heater ring was drawing too much power and heating up my corrector plate too much above the ambient temperature. And I think this caused some warpage in the corrector plate, which was just enough to skew my star shapes. One night I unplugged my dew heater ring from the telescope and my telescope performed flawlessly and I got perfectly round stars. Check out this before and after shot of the great Hercules star cluster before my problem and after I fixed it. Now, I'm not exactly sure if the corrector plate itself is warping into a different shape or heat coming off the corrector plate is causing some interference in some way. Regardless, by simply unplugging my dew ring, I was able to eliminate the issue. However, dew heaters are super crucial for keeping dew and moisture and frost off your corrector plate or lens when you're imaging at night. So to combat this, I've built my very own custom dew heater controller for my equipment. This little box here contains a dimmer switch for dimming LED lights and turning on motors at specific speeds, but I've repurposed that to channel the amount of energy I want to go into my dew heater and therefore how hot it gets. As for the camera and imaging train I'm going to be using to capture the Veil Nebula, this is the same standard imaging train I've used on my big telescope many times in the past, but here you have my dedicated ZWO ASI 294MC Pro camera. And inside there, I have an L Extreme filter. It's a narrow band filter, which blocks out most of light pollution and other wavelengths of light. I have my Celestron OAG, which is an off-axis guider that allows me to attach another camera at the top here, which locks onto a star and I can guide. And right here is my focal reducer which takes my 2,800 millimeters of focal length on my telescope 
and times it by 0.63, which allows me to get a focal length of 1800 millimeters, which is much wider and much more suitable for a big nebula like this. With everything taken care of during the day, I can't wait to get imaging tonight. I'll see you guys then. Hi everyone, welcome back. It is currently late at night and my exposures are well underway on the Western Veil vale Nebula. For tonight, I'm on track to take about 65 minute exposures but we'll see by the end of the night. I'm not sure yet if I'll do two nights on this target or if one that will be enough, but I'll decide and I'll let you guys know at the end of the video. So far, my custom dew heater controller has been working great and I haven't had any issues with my star shapes so far. One thing I like to do when I'm imaging and I do quite frequently is I remote into my astrotography uh, computer via my phone and I can view everything that's going on with my imaging session. I can see all my imaging session and my guiding, my Nina, um, Stellarium, etc. All the software is right there. Super easy when I'm just, I'm tired and, and I, I'm about to go to bed. I, I can just remote into my computer and make sure everything's going well. That's gonna be all for today, folks. I really hope you like my final image of the Veil vale Nebula complex at the end of the video. And I hope to be getting out more times to shoot some more summer targets this season. Until then, clear skies.